to describe a web-based software package called WebHyper. Hyper stands for Hierarchical Preferences. And it's used for multiple criteria decision making, specifically when you have a discrete set of alternatives and uh, you're evaluating those alternatives uh, with multiple criteria. One of the options in this program is to use the AHP, the Analytical Hierarchy Process, uh, developed by Thomas Sadi. But uh, Raimo Hamelainen at the Helsinki University of Technology has incorporated other multiple criteria techniques besides just the AHP into the software. nice thing I like about this is it's web-based and it's free. So anybody in the world can use it. The URL up here is www.hyper.hut.fi. <coughs> it's in Helsinki, Finland. Okay, so when you uh, enter that, a little window will pop, and if it doesn't, you should hit this button, bring WebHyper to the front, and at that point, another window will pop with a start button. It assumes that you've got Java loaded, and then the software itself, there's that little window I was describing. Um, software itself will then, once you hit the start button, it'll open up, and uh, I've got a file open uh, called cars. To open a file, you just hit open and I've already selected cars. This first one right there. Okay, so the goal in this example is to buy a car and you're evaluating four possible alternatives. The Citroen, the Passat, the Audi, and the Opal. And there's three main criteria, which is driving, comfort, an economy, and then each main criteria is split into two sub-criteria. Driving consists of top speed and acceleration. Comfort is uh, driving comfort and noises. Economy is price and expenses. So you click on a node and go up to priorities, and here are your options for evaluating the criteria. Um, the first set they used AHP in this example the analytical hierarchy process. And you can see in this window that popped that uh, uh, economy is three times more important than driving. You can either type the number in or you can move the lines or move the bar to reflect your, your preferences. See how the, the bars change? Uh, the bars change when you move the, uh, the sliding bar and you want this consistency ratio to be in the green because if you're inconsistent in your preferences then it turns red. So I've been inconsistent somehow. But anyway, uh, when there's three criteria you have to answer three of these pairwise comparison questions comparing uh, economy to comfort and uh, driving to comfort and economy to, uh, to driving. So that's the AHP technique. Okay, um, then if you click on the criteria and look at the priorities here, they use the swing method where um, you sign 100 points, the most important attribute, and, uh, uh, and then less than that to, to whatever is less important. And then the value function was used for top speed. Um, you can see the Passat Top speed is 180, that's kilometers per hour. Um, and here's the value function that going from uh, 150 to whatever this is here, about 180, is just as important as going from 180 to 250. So you get the most value down here. If that's not true, or if you get more value, then you can push the thing up. If you get less value, or if it's exactly equal, it would be a straight line. 
But anyway, this is an example of a value function. So let's go ahead and put it back about to where it was. So, next, acceleration of, again, value function. Let's use there. Okay. Notice that the best is, is um, lower. 8 gives us the value of 1. Okay, so once you put in all the data and all the information on the cars and your preferences, then you can go up to analysis and see the composite priorities. Uh, given this set, looks like a Citroen is the best. <coughs> and then the Opal, then the Audi and then the Passat. And this is a nice chart because it shows why it, the uh, Citroen is preferred. It's got a, a pretty high economy rating and a, a pretty high comfort rating and a, and a good driving rating. So <clears throat> that puts it over the top. And by changing these segments you can get different you can get different graphs. You can play around and get different different looking graphs. And that's about it. Now when you're setting this up, just double click and you'll get an element. Double click again and you'll get a second element. And then when you want to connect these, you, you left click on one, right click on the other, and it makes the connection. So you can see the, that this is a pretty easy way to set up your, your uh, network diagram. So you can use this for uh, one of your homework problems, and uh, good luck.